Come on, begin to pour out to him today. Come on, he's in the room today. Come on, whatever you need today, open up your mouth. If you need to go down before him at your seat, if you need to run down to the altar, I dare you to open up your mouth and ask God for what you need in this place. Cause he's been that good. I said he's a prayer answering God. I said he's a prayer answering God. Come on, open up your mouth and give him praise. I said give him praise. I said give him praise. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out. Hallelujah. I said I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about how he set me free. I get joy when I think about how he kept my mind, how he kept my life. Should have been dead, should have been crazy, should have been swallowed up, should have been in my grave, should have been in a hospital bed. But God, I said, but God. Look 
them in the face and say, neighbor, say, neighbor, welcome to your coming out season. You are about to come out with power and victory. Now give him the glory. Come on. I said you're coming out season. I said you're coming out season. Glory God. It's your coming out season. Glory be to God. God bless you. God bless you. This next minute, come on, touch the steps. This next minute is for the praises that can praise it without music. Shut up. is for those who can praise him without the music. Glory! He's worthy, wonderful, you're mighty, you're faithful, you're sovereign, you're a healer, you're a deliverer, you're my way maker, you're a burden bearer, you're my keeper. Hallelujah! Come on, hallelujah! Hallelujah! From the back of the church to the front of the church, give the Lord a resounding glory in this house. Because Tuesday, you're not going to have the organ. On Wednesday, you're not going to have the piano. On Friday, you're not going to have the drums. Uh, you're going to have to drive down the street and lift up your hands and say, you can't make me doubt him, devil, because I know too much about him. Glory, God. Yee. Fresh oil on your life. Fresh oil on your life. Fresh oil on your life. Do you receive it? Fresh oil on your life. Fresh oil on your life. Ah, glory. The alabaster box has been broken. Fresh oil on your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. This is my miracle season. Hey, hallelujah. I had enough losing seasons, but I'm about to walk into my delivering season. Hey, glory be to God. My goodness. <laughs> mm. I heard the Holy Spirit right now say, I gave you enough losses to learn from. Can you receive that? He said, I gave you enough losses to learn from. But that don't mean you're not going to make the playoffs. Glory be to God. You're still moving into your victory season. You're still going into your deliverance season. You're still going into your victory season. You got enough losses to learn from, but you're still about to step into your new season. Glory be to God. Come on, put your hands together and give the Lord praise. As you take your seat all over the house, God bless you. My God. We think of his goodness and all that he's done for us. And we bless him. Listen, to show you how strong the anointing is in this house, we, this weekend I went through some type of physical something and so I contacted Elder Ron and Ryan 
and told them just as a precaution to prepare to minister this morning. And But y'all know I love church. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so I told Lady Ned, I said, well, we'll go to the 9 a.m. service. And, and we came to the 9 a.m. service, and the Lord moved mighty. <sighs> My God. And so we get ready to leave and we go into my back office and and then Sister Michelle got up and started breaking up to follow ground. I hear the sounds of Pentecost. I hear the sounds of revival and and so we were supposed to be leaving out and then Lady Ness said, well, I'm, I'm gonna go in to worship since we're still here. And then Pamela James takes the mic. So I told Antoine, I said, quit playing, we might as well stay. No, so God bless you. And listen, just really quick, I just, I just want you all to help me celebrate. Sister Mavis just retired from being with the school district. She had a long career of teaching. She's one of our teachers. Amen. And she was at Buchanan and the Clovis schools and she is a Hall of Famer for women's rights. She is in the Riverside Hall of Fame for basketball. And she is one of the leaders. I want you to hear this. She's one of the leaders that led to the Title IX provisions that we have now, trying to protect women's rights in sports. Amen. She was that class that led to all of that. And she is in the Women's Hall of Fame in Riverside for basketball. She's amazing. And so we just salute her. And as she goes out of, into retirement, now she can get busy more in church. Amen. <laughs> And, and, and this weekend, I flew to San Diego to celebrate my wife. She's now doctor, doctor. She got two doctorate degrees. Doctor, doctor. Lady Ned. Bless you. I ain't seen somebody love studying that much. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. You. <laughs> Yeah, we celebrate, amen, because when the head go up, amen, everything else got to come up. I said everything is coming up. Some of you are about to step into new dreams. God's about to open up some doors for you, isn't that right? Glory be to God. I want you to know that, and so we just thank God. So, you know, this is, this is it's, I, I understand now, thank you, Holy Ghost, why he would have me to stay, um, because it is important that um, I introduce uh, Ryan Randolph to the stage because he was almost not with us just a few months ago. Amen. That's some real stuff. And I forget what Sunday it was, but and I need you all to, to stay the whole time today, but I forget what Sunday it was, but the Holy Spirit just impressed upon me what the devil was trying to do because Ryan is the legacy of the Bethesda churches. Amen. And I don't know if you know it, adults, you can go with me. The devil's trying to steal our legacy. Notice, he, he, so, some of us are, you know, we, we've been jacked up, done came back to the house of God, trying to get our life together. He wants our children. And it used to be that he would wait until they were 18 then he started getting them in middle school. Now he's trying to get them in preschool. 
The devil wants our children. I wish I had 50 people that said the devil is a lie. He can't have our children. You can take the car, you can take the house, but you can't have our children in the name of Jesus. And so he is the legacy, amen. I want you to celebrate this miracle as he comes. For the first time in five months. Somebody shout hallelujah. Does anybody know him to be a keeper? Does anybody know him to be a way maker? Does anybody know him to be a provider? Does anybody know him to be a healer? The God that gives life and life more abundantly. Somebody give God a great hand praise and a shout. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Truly God is great and greatly to be praised. I used to say this all the time, but it has a new meaning. I don't take it as a light thing to be in the house of God because it truly is a privilege. It's a privilege. And the simple fact that you are sitting in the house of God, the God that created the heavens and the earth, the God that said, let there be, and there was, is nothing short of a miracle. And so this is why we come and we shake the roof off this place with praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I give honor to God, I give honor to God. I give honor to Senior Pastor Tobias Rickens and First Lady Dr. Dr. Nett. Truly they are gifts to this house, angels of this house, and so we thank and praise God for that. I thank and praise God for my beautiful wife who is with me on today. Come on, y'all gotta make some noise for her now. Yeah, that's my wife. That was my nurse. That was the one that helped me to the bathroom when I could barely walk at night. When I didn't have the strength to lift up my hands and press the nurse's button, she went ahead and took care of it for me. And so I tell you I loved her before, but I sure love me some Brittany Randolph now. <laughs> Without further ado, turn with me to the book of Acts chapter 4. The book of Acts chapter 4, verses 29 through 31. Acts chapter 4, verses 29 through 31. Brothers, I hope y'all caught that. that. That ain't got nothing to do with my message, but I hope you find you one out there that can take care of you when you're at your lowest. Yeah, keep that one. The one that was with you when you didn't have nothing. The one when you was at rock bottom. When there wasn't really no reason for them to stick around and she was still there, that's the one. Acts chapter 4, verses 29 through 31. And it reads like this. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth thine hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. Somebody say, Jesus. Jesus. Somebody say, Jesus. Jesus. Did you taste how that felt coming off your lips? Yeah. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God with boldness. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and above all the doers of his word. My subject today is shake us into revival. Shake us into revival. Look at the person next to you and say, shake me into revival. I begin this discourse talking about the faith. Everyone say the faith. 
There is the faith and there is our faith. When we speak of the faith, we're speaking of our belief system. We're speaking of the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who was not only the creator of this world, who was not only the one that said, let there be, who was not only the one that made all things and by all things were him made. Not only was he that, but he clothed himself in flesh and dwelt among us. He became the remedy for the thing that poisoned mankind from its very inception all the way until present day. He became the remedy for sin. And not only did he become the remedy and became the penalty, bore the penalty of our sin, for the Bible teaches us that the wages of sin is death. That means every time somebody commits a sin, something has to die. Every, com every little sin that you thought was just a little one, a little white lie that you told, the penalty for that was death. Every big sin, the one that was big, everybody seen it and they seen you. Yes, even that too was even equal to death. Even though there may be legislation in our nation that might be able to dictate and co-sign your sin, even those sins are worthy of death uh, and Christ clothed himself in flesh dwelt among us uh, hung up on a cross and bore a bloody gory penalty of death that was fit for you and I not only did he die which is the cold thing he died and became uh, the penalty for our sin uh, but he rose again somebody say he rose again uh, Somebody should have got up and took a lap right now because not only did he die, but death couldn't hold him down. He got up from that grave just when Satan thought he had figured it all out and got him beat. Our Lord and Savior showed us how to get up out of the tomb. He showed us how to get up out of dead stuff. He showed us how to rise up out of dead situations. And I don't know where you came from to make it here on this morning. I don't know what kind of situations you're coming out of but I came to speak life in the midst of your tomb I came to speak the name of Jesus and the power of the Holy Ghost to shake up your tomb and cause for you to rise up with life not the old life that you lived but to rise up in the newness of life for if any man be in Christ he is a new creature old things are passed away behold all things you looking at a man that had to look around and shake himself up and remember what the Lord said uh, when he said I will never leave you nor forsake you uh, but I will be with you even until the end of time uh, when mother and father forsake you uh, I'll pick you up uh, you might have some friends that turn back their backs on you uh, but I'll be closer than a friend uh, I'll be there with you in the midnight hour uh, and I will send my comforter uh, this comforter that we preach of on today is none other than the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, a portion given to mankind. I want to let you know that in order for you to conquer the sting of sin, you need the Holy Ghost. In order for you to conquer the weight of generational curses, you need the Holy Ghost. In order to make it through this sin sick world and keep a piece of your mind, I mean a piece of your mind you need the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost is what allows you to go through chaotic situations and still lift up your head to the heels from whence cometh your help because all the government may be tripping the folks around you might be tripping your money might be a little funny but the Holy Ghost has power and if you can just hold fast to the Holy Ghost if you can operate under the power power of the Holy Ghost uh, you'll start to see the hand of God move in your life uh, look at somebody across the aisle and ask them do you have the Holy Ghost 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see some of y'all looking around a little funny because you don't have the Holy Ghost. You don't understand this joy that we have. The world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. You may not understand my praise, but if you take a look at my life and you start to see how God brought me out, you'll understand why I got to give him the glory. You'll understand why I throw my head back and shout hallelujah. You'll understand why I hear the Spirit give me utterance and out of my belly flows rivers of living waters. It's because of the power of the Holy Ghost. Somebody shout hallelujah. So this is the faith, this belief system that we have, the thing that quickens your spirit. This is the faith. Not only do we have the faith, but then we have our faith. This is the faith that many of us know about. Uh, the Bible lets us know that without faith, uh, it's impossible to please him. Uh, the Bible lets us know that without faith, uh, we can't even come to God. Uh, in this house, we teach that faith is the currency of heaven. Uh, and whenever you need to have a transaction with the almighty God, oh, glory be to God. I just felt something right there, Pops. How in the world are we having an exchange with the almighty God? As frail and simple as your body is, you have the ability to have an exchange with the almighty God as long as you've got faith. Is there anybody in here today that got faith? I mean, you may be struggling in some areas of your life, but I'm holding on to that faith. The men's Bible study been teaching that faith is like a shield that you can stand behind. And although I may forget to put on certain parts of the armor, if I can just hold on to my faith, I've got the ability to fend the fiery darts of the evil, and I can call on the name of Jesus and think start to move in my life uh, is anybody in here got a little bit of faith somebody shout faith So the enemy understands our faith. The enemy understands the power of your faith. And both of which are under attack. I want to let you know that the enemy, when he tries to take away your house, he wouldn't try to just make you have a bad day. When he calls for you to wake up and have a flat tire, he wasn't just trying to make you have more bills. When you got laid off of that last job, I want to let you know he wasn't just trying to complicate things in your life, but he was trying to get you to lay down your faith he can't destroy your faith he has to convince you to lay it down and people across the country throughout this week are limping into churches because they survived the attack of holding fast to their faith look I don't care how you came in but you made it in here on today by faith look at your neighbor and say by faith Oh yes, your faith is under attack. If he can get you to lay down your faith, you've then surrendered your connection to God. If he can get you to lay down your faith, he's then allowed for you to be a person that has to fight on your own. And some of y'all have had the testimony of all my life I've had to fight. It's a bad one. It's a tired one. It's one that you don't want to hear about no more. And for some reason, they're going back and remaking the movie uh, so that people can have that same tired testimony again uh, reminding you that all oh, my life I had to fight uh, I want to talk to somebody in here that's tired of fighting by yourself uh, if you're tired of fighting by yourself uh, I came to preach to you and let you know you in the right place uh, you're in the house of the almighty God uh, he says I am the Lord of hosts which means I got an army with me that will fight on your behalf we go through just like the world goes through but the difference is we got a God that will fight our battles that's why I didn't come up here looking like what I've been through because when it's time to go to war all I got to do is drop down on my knees and shout Jesus Lord fight my battles and he sends his army of angels 
and they go to war for me. They fight battles that I cannot reach. They fight battles that I cannot see. And when I'm tired in my body, I just wait on the Lord. For they that wait on the Lord. Oh, y'all know what I'm talking about in here. I'm in the right church on today. The enemy wants to destroy your faith. But I got news for you. He, what All he can do, people of God, is send threats. Somebody say threats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of y'all come from a fighting background. I can tell by the way when I shake your hand. Your hands is a little rough. Your knuckles is a little rough. Some of y'all done been into some fights before. And you know how to point out somebody who can't really fight. Yeah, that's the one that's doing all the big talking. That's the one that's doing all the big threats. That's the one that's talking about what they gon' do. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's who the devil is. He tries to punk you and get you to lay down before the fight even starts by talking about what he's going to do to your family, what he's going to do to your career, what he's going to do about the plight of your situation. And what many Christians across the world have done is before the battle even begins, they've psyched themselves out of the fight. They've laid down to the wiles of the enemy and they've succumbed and surrendered before the battle even starts. But I wonder if there's any body in here under the sound of my voice uh, that is bold enough to stand up to the devil uh, and say get thee behind me Satan I'm a child of the king of kings I'm a child of the lord of lords and I'm gonna hang on and see what the end's gonna be I want to encourage somebody in here on today you got to hang on child of God if you can hold on to his unchanging hand you'll see miracles perform formed. If you can hold on to his unchanging hand, you'll see promises come to fruition. Somebody say, I've got faith. Glory be to God. And so we have faith. Not only do we have faith, but the Lord has blessed us with the power of the Holy Ghost. And not only does the Holy Ghost give us entry into the kingdom of God, but the Holy Ghost says that it will lead us and guide us into all truth. Oh, I feel good in my spirit on today because I don't have to know all the answers about my life. Some folk out there won't move until they got all all the answers but I got news for you there is a wonderful counselor first lady you know something about a little bit of counseling and you know that even our doctor doctor counselor has to be tuned in with the counselor of all counselors it is the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost gives you wisdom it's what allows for you to learn how to navigate each situation that life gives you it's what allows for you to lay down at night with peace in your mind Mind, uh, and joy in your heart uh, because you know that when you wake up tomorrow uh, your counselor will whisper direction to you uh, is there anybody that received a whisper from the counselor this week uh, you had to go and meet with your boss uh, and your boss thought he knew what you was gonna say uh, and the counselor whispered into your ear uh, and what came out of your mouth was something that changed the plight of that corporation uh, what came out of your little humble self barely passing geometry self uh, had the power to change the plight of that organization. Uh, it's because I have the wonderful counselor on my hands. Uh, he's on my side and he leads me and guides me. We need the counselor. The beautiful thing about the counselor and what the counselor does is he shows you how to navigate in each season. And in this season, people of God, in this last days, actually, I want to shift that. In the last hour before the coming of the Lord, uh, I want to let you know this is the last hour. <laughs> I came up in the church and when I was growing up, they said it's the last days. And we believed it. They wasn't lying. Uh, each day that we get is nothing but grace and an opportunity to get it right. Uh, that's why we come up in the house of God with our hands up uh, surrendering all uh, some of y'all come in walking in like you got it all together not me uh, no sir no ma'am uh, I walk in with my hands lifted up as a sign that I surrender God uh, search me shine your light uh, I know that time is running out and in this last hour I need you to guide me 
guide us in the last hour and those of us that are filled with the Holy Ghost understand what our assignment is and that is to win souls. Oh yeah, I got news for you. Uh, you may not be in the pulpit preaching. Uh, you might not be on the piano tickling the keys. Uh, but there's an assignment for you. Uh, and that is that you got to be out winning souls. Uh, I know I got to clock in tomorrow. Uh, but as I clock in, I'm looking for an opportunity uh, to win some souls. Uh, I'm looking for a chance not to be up on the latest gospel. Uh, uh, gossip, excuse me. Uh, but to draw somebody in and win a soul is there anybody in here that just want to win souls yeah yeah y'all understand because he that wins souls is wise and in this terminal hour we have to be wise the enemy knows what time it is he don't know the day nor the hour that the Lord is coming but he's looking at the events that are transpiring and he's looking at the word which is why I hope you're looking at the word because he knows that the time is ticking and each day as we look at the events that transpire we notice that the enemy is becoming more aggressive the enemy is becoming more violent the enemy is becoming more crafty and in times where he used to have to hide behind the scenes now he's showing up looking at you face to face and daring you to say something he's daring the church to say something and church across the world and for show in this country are backing down to the fight uh, trying to be politically correct uh, they're backing down from the fight uh, trying not to hurt nobody's feelings uh, they're backing down from the fight uh, in hopes that if we be silent that this will pass on by uh, and we can get back to church as usual uh, but no sir no man Satan you are a liar uh, in this house we will speak against what's wrong and we will elevate what's right uh, look at your neighbor and say right is right and wrong is wrong yeah yeah we're in an hour that the things that were deemed right by the Lord are now being spoken of and torn down and considered wrong uh, they say things like we are oppressors in the kingdom uh, but if anybody in here knows that you've been freed uh, ain't nothing oppressive about Jesus uh, you had to lay something down uh, and when you laid that thing down all of a sudden you felt lighter uh, all of a sudden you felt like you had a little bit of wiggle room uh, all of a sudden sudden it became easier to praise God because you laid down that which was wrong and you held fast to the righteousness of God somebody say hallelujah the enemy is violent and aggressive in these days and he wants the church to be muted he wants you to look at what's going on and keep your opinion to yourself. He wants you to look at what's going on and be passive with it. Uh, he's okay even with your passive aggression uh, as long as you don't stand up outright uh, and declare what thus saith the Lord. Uh, there's even got the nerve to say that the you know folks are offensive uh, and they say that we weaponize the things of God. Uh, they accuse us of weaponizing and tearing other folks down uh, but the last time I looked at my word it told me that the word of God is a sword and it's sharper than any two-edged sword piercing asunder dividing soul and spirit dividing bones and marrow and anytime we start talking about the word of God oh yes if you carnal minded it's gonna be offensive you're gonna look and see exactly where you fall short and if you don't have no plans on changing you gonna walk up out of here mad today you gonna walk up out of here upset talking about I ain't going back to that church no more but woe unto you who hear the word and don't change because the Lord is coming back for a church that's without spot or wrinkle and so whenever he says in his word it's got to be yea and amen if you say I'm wrong Lord I'm wrong if you say I need to put it down God I'll put it down if you said that thing is unclean God it's unclean if you said I need to walk away from the relationship God I'll walk away and be broken hearted for a season because I know that you are the mender of broken hearts you're the God who knows my 
our heart better than I know it. For the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. No man can know it, only God. I feel a shaking in the room on today. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, Lord, shake us into revival. And this is what brings us to the text on today. I'm almost done. In Acts chapter 4, verse 29, uh, uh, Peter and John are praying. And the Bible says that they say, and now, Lord, behold their threatenings. Lord, look at how the enemy is threatening us. And grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. Somebody say the word. word. Oh, yes, the word. Uh, depending on how you use this word, it might cut somebody. Uh, but I thank the Lord that he didn't just come with truth. He came with grace. Uh, oh, yes, somebody needed grace. Uh, some of y'all know that truth tastes bitter sometimes. Uh, truth can be a little sour sometimes. Uh, but the Lord came full of grace uh, and truth. Peter now, while praying, says, And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, uh, and grant unto thy servants with all boldness uh, that they may speak their word. Peter and John, and they were coming off of that great miraculous healing after they walked out of the temple uh, that we heard preached last Sunday where they had the man that was begging of alms. Uh, the Bible says that Peter and John, as the man was begging of alms, looked at the man and they said, Look on us. Silver and gold have I none, but what I have I give you. And that was the power of the almighty God. They put hands on the man and commanded that he would take up his bed and walk. And the man who could not walk, the Bible describes it as his ankle and feet bones began to have strength and he began to walk. Not only did he begin to walk, but he started leaping. Uh, I wonder if that's a sign of the healed on today because the Lord took touched my body and healed me when I was down bad in a hospital bed couldn't hardly raise my hands up losing 40 to 50 pounds sick in my body the Lord spoke a word from eternity and over time I was healed oh I thank God for the miracle of healing on today <laughs> That was for somebody that's struggling with a sickness in here. Because after the Lord heals you, some of y'all, we're going to see you leaping around the house of God. And when you see me leaping around the house of God, don't wonder what's going on in my life. Don't wonder about what I'm going through. But just know that the Lord is good. That leaping must have been a sign of the heal. The man was leaping. But not only did he leap, the Bible says that he started following them around uh, and then when the when they be got when they got arrested the bible said the man was standing right there with him ain't that something that when the Lord heals you, you ready to follow until the wheels fall off. Uh, wherever you take me through hell or high water, I'm get, this is where I'm supposed to be at. Uh, I'm going to follow you to the end, Lord. Uh, and some of y'all got that testimony that you're willing to follow him till the wheels fall off. Now, this man was a living testimony that calls for these men to be released out of jail. Uh, the religious authorities and those that captivated, that, that held them captive, uh, were forced to release released them because they had this man standing by them which was a sign throughout all the community that what they were teaching was the truth and I'm believing God for signs and wonders in this season I'm believing that those that are praying and seeking God will see that the Lord will do signs and wonders in this house those of y'all that came in today we're gonna give you an opportunity in a minute to, to run down to this altar and we are believing that the Lord is able to do signs and wonders that will point to him that he is the way he is the truth and he is the life what is his name his name is Jesus the God that's able to do exceedingly 
and abundantly above all we can ask or think. This man stood there as a sign that what they were teaching was the truth and also a sign that the community surrounding them acknowledged that the name of Jesus was strong enough to save, that the name of Jesus was strong enough to heal, and that the name of Jesus had enough power to flip that entire city on its backside. The Bible says earlier in this chapter that they had to send Peter and John back and they threatened them that they bet not say nothing else about Jesus. But oh, glory be to God. If Peter and John was in this day, they would have got right back on the internet and got to posting about Jesus. They would have went right back to knocking on doors talking about Jesus. And they witnessed it so they were bold. But they had to get down and pray for the rest of the servants that they may speak the word of the Lord. Note here that in verse 30, it says, by stretching forth thine hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. Yeah, we just talked about him. And let me get to this verse 32, and we're wrapping it up. And when they had prayed, somebody say they prayed. Is anybody praying in here on today? And when they had prayed, the Bible says that the place was shaken where they were assembled together. All of a sudden, when they dropped down on their knees, they were all on one accord and all had the mind of Christ and things around them got to shaking. Is there anybody in here that needs a shaking to take place in their life? You may not know it. Some of y'all think that you need provision. So you're asking God, Lord, bless me. You don't realize that you really need God to shake things up in your life. Some of y'all are waiting on God saying, Lord, bless me with a husband. Bless me with a husband. But before he bless you with that husband that he has designed for you, he's got to shake your life up. Some of y'all think that you've got to prosper further in your career. And you focused on my career and my finances and my dreams. God's got some shaking up to do in order to get your mind where it's supposed to be. The Bible says that they were asking for God to heal and show signs and God chose to shake up the place. I want to preach to somebody in here and prepare you for a great shaking that's about to take place in your life. Things that you become numb and described as the usual. God is about to shake you up out of that. The Bible says that the place was shaken uh, where they were assembled together uh, but it wasn't just good enough for some shaking to take place uh, because for some of you in here God has shook your life up before uh, and you walked out the same way that you came uh, for some of y'all in here today you're here uh, because God has shaken up your life uh, and you remembered what your grandmama and them taught you uh, and that was to get to the house of God uh, it's not good enough just to be shook up but the Bible says that they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God with boldness oh hallelujah be to God I want to let you know that you need the Holy Ghost in here on today you need the Spirit of God living on the inside not that funny ghost that they be showing on TV that make you shake and do little funny stuff but I'm talking talking about the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God living on the inside that causes for the very atmosphere to shift. The Holy Ghost that has the power to cause demons to tremble. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost, the Spirit that was on the Apostle that recognized the man. He says, I know who you are. The Holy Ghost that truly causes for the gates of hell not to prevail in your life. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost. The thing that anchors your soul when the winds of life get to blowing. Is there anybody in here on today that has the Holy Ghost? The Holy Ghost is what kept me when I was down and out. It was the Holy Ghost that convinced me that I would live and not die. 
it's the Holy Ghost that was sent from on high that wasn't just for you but for all of your generations it's for your children and your children's children some of y'all are concerned about leaving something behind leave the legacy of the Holy Ghost so that when your kids find themselves down and out they remembered waking up at 6 in the morning to the sound of they mama the sound of they daddy calling on the name of Jesus leave a legacy of the Holy Ghost it will cause for no weapon that's formed against you to prosper leave the legacy of the Holy Ghost it'll allow you to walk through the valley of the shadow of death and you will fear no evil for God is with you his rod and his staff will comfort you he'll prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies and what was previously used to trip you up because of the Holy Ghost will now become your footstool it'll be a source of elevation because I have the Holy Ghost demons got to back up because of the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost is what's going to send revival the Holy Ghost is what will make you a new creature you thinking about moving to another city you don't need to move to another city you need the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost will cause for resources to shower down from heaven the Holy Holy Ghost will cause for things that were previously unseen to manifest themselves at your fingertips. It's the Holy Ghost that the Lord wants to shake up in your life and cause for you to quicken on the inside. Somebody shout the Holy Ghost. Come on, give him the next slide. We're going to run through this. Three types of shaking in the natural. Three types of shaking, earthquakes. There's a convergent plate boundary. When you hear convergent plates, I want you to think of a collision. The plates that are underneath the Earth's crust in the underneath the Earth's crust that operate in an unseen area, I want you to think of them colliding. When you hear convergent plate, I want you to think of confrontation. People of God, don't fear confrontation. For when two plates collide, they build a mountain. I want you to hear that in the spirit because the Lord will use confrontation to elevate you. Don't run from confrontation, but know that the Lord will fight your battles. Also know here that when two plates collide, the one that is more dense, the one that has more weight, the one that carries more pull, submerges beneath and lifts up. Somebody say the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will lift you up. The Holy Ghost uh, will cause for what the enemy meant to destroy you. He'll turn it around for your good. I hear folks quote all the time that all things work together for the good. But I got news for you. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, I'm not too sure how it's working out. You might just end up bumping your head on dead ends. But we've got to have the Holy Ghost. The second slide, give him the next one. The second type of shaking is called a divergent plate boundary. It's a linear feature that exists between two tectonic plates pulling away from each other. Everybody say pulling away. Sometimes what the Lord has to do is separate things in your life. Know here that when the plates pull away, it makes room for magma or fire to rise up. And the fire fills in the gap. Some of y'all are afraid of losing things when it comes to God. But as things begin to pull away, you'll notice the fire of the Holy Ghost arise. He said, let God arise and let your enemies be scattered. 
Glory be to God. Divergent boundaries within continents initially produce rifts. Initially, there's a gap at first. Initially, it looks like there's a loss. Initially, it looks like you down bad and in the negative, uh, but the rifts eventually become valleys, livable, sustainable areas, uh, rich in agriculture, uh, areas where livestock can get, be raised, uh, areas where you can be fruitful and productive. What was once looked at as a loss, uh, the Holy Ghost can turn around and make it a win. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, give them this last one and the altar is open. Come on, come on, come on. Three types of shaking. The third uh, is called a transform plate boundary. Uh, and that's the one that we live on here in California. Uh, it doesn't necessarily build mountains. Uh, it doesn't necessarily uh, separate and produce valleys. Uh, but it's a constant friction that takes place. Uh, it's a constant rubbing together uh, that causes for a shaking to take place. Uh, and for somebody in here, the Lord is allowed for there to be friction in your life uh, you know what it means to live holy uh, but whenever you try to do good uh, evil is always present uh, I want to let you know that if you hang in there and fight the good fight uh, if you hang in there in the midst of friction uh, the Lord will arise and make you great uh, the Lord will send his Holy Ghost uh, to give you the strength it takes uh, with the Bible and the, and the slide says here uh, that the uh, uh, transform boundary occurs when two tectonic plates move past one another uh, and sheer stress operates at the transform boundaries uh, which involves a sliding motion come on everybody stand up all over the church come on altar workers I want y'all to get ready because the Lord is sending a revival You called it stress, and you said, I don't need to be dealing with all this. You made you a bubble bath, and you lit your candles trying to get away from the stress. Some of y'all said, I need to drink more water. This stress is wearing me out. Some of y'all even had the nerve to go to the store. I don't know what store y'all went to. Y'all went and bought some crystals and said maybe these uh, will remove the stress. Some of y'all start burning sage and opening windows in your house. Throw that mess out. It's not going to do nothing about that stress. Uh, you letting demons in and they're going to wear your weary tail out. But I want to tell you about a God whose name is Jesus. And he's been shaking up your life for such a time as this. He's been shaking up your life so that you can come down to the altar. Come on, the altar is open right now. If you're here today and you want revival, the Lord is in the house. Whatever you need, I want to let you know that it can be made simple. All you need is him. We need you, Lord. Need you, Lord. Uh, need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. Uh, need you to heal. Need you to save. Uh, need you to revive in the name of Jesus. Come on, come on. If you're here today and you have not been baptized in the name of Jesus, uh, we have water that's ready. Come on, somebody needs to give their life up right now. Come on, come on. In the name of Jesus. All you got to do is tell him, I want to be baptized. I want to be baptized. I'm ready to surrender it all and take up this walk with him. In the name of Jesus. Lord, move on the behalf of your people. Revive, revive, revive. Give breath, give breath, give breath. Somebody is out of breath in the name of Jesus. We breathe life back into you. Lord, we breathe life. We breathe life. Come on, man of God, open up your mouth. Open up your lips. New life. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. New creation. Old things are passed away. Old habits now dead. Old version of you now dead. Behold a new man, new woman. Child of God emerging in this place on today. Holy Ghost blow your wind. Come on, come on. I need all hearts worshiping in this place on today. In the name of Jesus. 
Jesus, 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 break up the fallow ground. Send sick souls become new in the presence of Jesus. Come on, more of you, more of you. We want more of you, oh God. We want more of you, oh God. We decrease right now that you may increase. We lay down our sins. We lay down uh, the addiction. We lay down uh, our way of thinking and we take up your way. In the name of Jesus, all middle school and high school students i want to i want to pray for you if you're here on today and you're in middle school or high school we want you to come down on today yeah 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 come on come on in the name of jesus middle school and high school come on Preserve a generation in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, young people, lift up your hands and begin to worship in this place. In the name of Jesus. Hey, come on. In the name of Jesus. Come on, line up and begin to worship. In the name of Jesus, Lord, do a new thing in the name of Jesus. Lord, preserve, make new, make holy, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, preserve her in her youth, O oh God. And cause her no weapon to form against her, O oh God. Do a new thing. of Jesus come on come on come on come on come on in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Come on, come on, it's okay. Let the tears fall. Let the tears fall. Come on, bow down and worship him. Bow down and worship him. Can you pray with this dear daughter? Come on, she's going to pray with you. In the name of Jesus. Come on, bow down, bow down, bow down. He's shaking you up. Bow down in the name of Jesus. Revival in this place. Revival in this place. Somebody came here because they need something and they ain't made it down yet. Uh, come on down to the altar and receive revival. In the name of Jesus. Revive. Make new. Make new. Bring back that which was dead, that which appears to be dying, resurrect, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we're calling an entire generation, get back in the house of God in the name of Jesus. Early 30s, mid 30s, late 30s, come back to the house of God in the name of Jesus late 20s lay down your life you've seen enough of the world lay it down in the name of Jesus he's calling for the generation full-on commitment not half stepping come on come on in the name of Jesus hey Hey God, glory to your name, oh God. 
you've shaken up the room now fill up with your spirit don't want to just experience the shaking want to experience a change God do it do it for your glory let this day be a memorial in your life of revival when Tuesday hits and you're not sure if you really experienced him you've got to tell the devil to back up I've been revived that's it young man you said you want to be saved now seek him seek and you shall find Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Hey. Oh. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on, generation. Lay it down. Lay it down before him. He's called you for more called you to be a changing agent come on come on when you walk in the room the power of the Holy Ghost causes things to change hey yeah 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 that's peace that you feel that's the Holy Ghost yeah that's joy that you feel that's the Holy Ghost now let them on the inside not good enough to be around on the outside let him on the inside oh god we let you in we surrender all and we let you in lord creating us a clean heart somebody say that lord creating me a clean heart renewing me a right spirit oh god yeah 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 glory to your name Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Those of you who are able, prepare your gifts at this time. As we give you back into the hands of senior pastor Tobias Brookins. Somebody let out a great shout, hallelujah. Consuming fire, sweet perfume, your awesome presence fills this room, consuming fire, sweet perfume, your Listen, listen, listen. Young people and old, he made the call. If you have not been baptized in Jesus' name, today you should be baptized. I don't want to go to another funeral without somebody being ready. If you're here and you know you have not been baptized, I want you to come down. We're going to wait for you. We're not rushing. We're not rushing. But if that's you, you have repented of your sins. You are a believer. You should be baptized. The man of God made the call. And I'm making it again for you. If you're here, you can come right now. The altar is open. We will baptize you. We have clothes in the back for you. We will baptize you today. Is there one? 
is there one who says, yes, Pastor Brookings, today I'm turning it all over. I'm giving it all up. Someone needs the Holy Spirit. You have not been filled with the Holy Spirit. You need to come right now. The Holy Spirit just spoke to Lady Nett, so we know it's true. Where are you? Will you trust God today and come down to the altar and receive prayer? Is that you? We're waiting for you. We're waiting for you. Why won't you be filled? Why not? In 1993, come on, here they come. Come on, men of God. Come on, Ron. Here they come. In 1993, I made the decision to step out into an aisle to say, I want to be baptized in Jesus' name. It has not been all perfect. It hasn't been perfect. But God has been perfect. And through every up and down, I'm still here. There were some, Sister Bernia Walker, I, I tell you, there were some that were smarter than me. They were, they were so smart. I used to admire them. But they didn't believe. We have another one being baptized. Listen, I just want to see you saved. That's it. That's why we open our doors. That's why we opened up a second site. We're not trying to be fancy. We're just trying to see souls saved. I'll open up a thousand sites if I can. If Starbucks can be on every corner, certainly there should be a church on every corner. Fentanyl is killing people. Our babies are trying things out with their friends and not realizing that, that there's a real authentic devil who doesn't just want you addicted, he wants you dead. He comes to steal, kill, and not play with you, but destroy. Can we celebrate the God in Ryan? Amen. And the honor. I lift my hands in worship. And I bless your holy name. For you deserve the glory. They may need help. There's like four and people back there.
you prepare your offerings all over the house. We want you to prepare your offerings. This morning when I sold my offering, the Lord prompted me to give to our young people and also to give to our Sunday school. I want some of you to do the same thing. Allow the Lord to tug on your heart if you have a, a heart for children. When you give your gift, put in the memo how much you want to go towards children's ministry or youth ministry. Sometimes Lady Ned and I are trying to relax and I'll be scrolling, looking at news articles, and I'll show her something. She said, baby, don't show me no more, no more. It's, it's, it's too depressing to see all of the hurt that's happening around our world. And listen, I want you as adults, don't you dare give up on your child. Are you hearing me? I don't care what they're going through, what kind of confusion they may be, whatever it is, it don't matter. You don't give up on your children. And what you do is you cover them in prayer. You keep that seed, you keep that door open. When you talk to them, some of you have children who don't live with you. When you get on the phone this afternoon, say, just know daddy's praying for you. I'm trusting that God's going to make out of you what he called you to be. Because there's too much giving up in our society right now. We throw people to the dogs, throw them to the wolves. But God can take your addicted child, your mentally ill child, and turn that thing completely around my God a timely message a timely message so we have some people being baptized this is what we want to do as they're preparing I want enough of you to make a little sacrifice oh come on through right now what some of you need to understand is when you feel the presence of the Lord you just have to open up your mouth you have to open up your mouth and allow him to take your tongue he'll take your tongue let him take your tongue he said the tongue is unruly life and death is in the power of the tongue so you got to open up your mouth you can't sit there chewing gum you got to put that gum in a wrapper and open up your mouth and say hallelujah 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 i wish i had 50 more people that said lord fill me again hallelujah 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 glory 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 hallelujah Hallelujah. He wants to give you your own language. Esha, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hey, glory. Glory, God. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. The Lord wants a bilingual church. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 
hallelujah hallelujah glory God oh my oh my oh my oh my you gotta let him have your tongue don't fight him don't fight him some of you are fighting don't fight him just let him have his way you're not gonna understand it but it'll come up just allow him to speak you gotta allow him to speak the Bible says as the spirit gives utterance just allow him to have his way and push in the house there's a push in the house come on come on I need you to lean into this lean into this come on come on come on come on your favorite movie lasts two hours amen we've only been here an hour and 40 minutes come on I need somebody to lean into the presence of the Lord that's here lean into it glory glory God Come on, Link, push in. Push in. Glory. Glory, glory. He says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. He says, I'll be in you a well springing up into everlasting life. Hallelujah. He says, with a stammering lip will I speak to the Gentiles. Glory be to God. You got to let him have his way. Some of you are nodding your head, but you're not talking. Amen. Open up your mouth and talk the same way you talk when you're out in the street. Come on, open up your mouth now and talk. Hallelujah. A closed mouth won't get fed. You got to open up your mouth. Glory, God. Have your way, Jesus. Hey. Go on and talk. And when you catch it, run with it. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. A feeling in this house. They tell me, and Ola Connie told me that he'll be able to take me to Nigeria one of these years. But they tell me that there's some places around the world where supernatural healings take place and every time I ask somebody why they say because they believe you see we got a lot of industry around here we got all kinds of medications we got all kinds of therapies and stuff like that so if God don't do it, I go to the doctor. He can give me a couple of pills and then I feel a little better. So I don't need God. He can give me a surgery. So I don't need God. But they told me there's certain places in the world where they don't have the ability to just go down to a CVS. So when they call for revival, they tell me that the people come from far and near and sometimes can't even hear what's being preached but they lift up their hands and because they believe God fills the people in the back that's the kind of revival that Ryan was preaching about I want you to understand you can receive what you need right now if you lift up your hands and open up your mouth and quit being so stubborn and start praising God like it's your last chance like tomorrow ain't promised to you if you begin to press in the spirit Press in the anointing. Press in the worship. Press in the hallelujah. 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 She got the Holy Ghost. Someone just got filled down here at the altar. Hallelujah. Lady Ned says she got it. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, hallelujah. Lord, rain down strength. Rain down your promises. Rain down. Rain down. Rain down. Whoa. Come on, everyone on their feet. The altar is still open. sending our young people
Lord, we bless you and glorify you for sending this daughter of Zion to make a commitment to you today for the rest of her life. You see every hurt, you see every pain, you see every depressed place, you see every broke up space. You see when she's been let down and when she's been rejected, Lord, but she reaches to you today. She pours out her emotions to you, the author and finisher of her faith. We declare, Lord, that we give you the glory for not allowing the devil to destroy her. Everything that he meant for evil, God, turn it around for her good in the name of Jesus. And now, woman of God, upon the confession of your faith and your belief in God's eternal word concerning the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and the confidence you have in that word found in Matthew 28 and 19, Mark 16, 16, Luke 24, 47, John 3, 5, and Acts 2, 38. And upon the authority given to the apostles and given to me as the pastor of this church, we now indeed baptize you in water in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the mission of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost is doing amen we want it to be a testimony thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus glory be to God <laughs> glory God let him do it let him do it let him do it let him do it oh my Oh, something happening here. Something's happening here. Thank you, Lord. Come on, everyone. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The children are coming home. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Oh. Come on, put your hands together for men of God coming. We need the men of God, hallelujah. There's an attack on men. There's an attack on man. I was sitting in a, a foolish seminar and they said we need to destroy patriarchy. I raised my hand, I said, whoa, whoa, hold on now. Are you talking about destroying the idea? that men shouldn't lead we find that to be toxic the devil is a lie the devil is a lie i had to stop that in the seminar hallelujah so i want you to give the lord praise for men coming to the lord in the name of jesus and by the power of the holy spirit we thank you for a young man with a contrite heart and a repentant spirit Tell our God, you know how you want to use him. You want to use him as the leader of his home. You want to use him as a leader in the community. You want to use him in ministry, Lord. We thank you for keeping him from all the wiles of the enemy. 
that the enemy meant for evil, Lord, turn it around for his good. And now, young man, upon the confession of your faith and your belief in God's eternal word concerning the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and the confidence you have in that word found in Matthew 28 and 19, Mark 16, 16, Luke 24, 47, John 3 and 5, and Acts 2, 38. And upon the authority given to the apostles and now given to me as the pastor of this church, we now indeed baptize you in water in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Come on all over the house. Thank you, Jesus. That's it, young man. Let him take the hallelujah and change it. He'll take the hallelujah and change it. Everyone in the audience, you're watching a miracle take place right now in the water. Glory be to God. Oh, my. Hey. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. you for this young man that chose to make today a day that he turned it all over to you you have dealt with him in the past in multiple ways you have shown him things Lord so he believes that you are the only living God but Lord today you chose to shift him God into a greater level and so now, God, I come asking that the old man would die in the water. Hallelujah. And a new creature would rise up. 
a man of God that could lead his family, a man of God that would be faithful, a man of God that would speak the oracles of God, a man of God that could prophesy, a man of God that could preach, a man of God that could teach, a man of God that could lay hands on the sick and they would recover, a man of God that would sever his ties from the world and come all the way out. And now, young man, upon the confession of your faith and your belief in God's eternal word concerning the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and your confidence in that word found in Matthew 28 19 Mark 16 16 Luke 24 47 John 3 5 and Acts 2 38 and upon the authority given to the apostles and now given to me as the pastor of this church we now indeed baptize you in water in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Holy Ghost, hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Just push through, young man, and begin to talk to him. Hallelujah, Lord. The Lord said he inclines his ear to our cry. We got to cry out. Hallelujah. We got to cry out. Hallelujah. Cry out. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, yes, yes. Oh yeah, he looks like he's refreshing him. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, he ain't a stranger to church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's it, young man. Push in. Lean in. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. This is what revival looks like. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Why won't you let him talk out of you? Hallelujah, Jesus. Let him talk. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. The world believes in supernatural in movies, but we have the real Holy Spirit right here. Hallelujah. Receive. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, saints, I need you to lean in with the prayer. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on. Let's go back to the old time way. Come on, we can't be the rushy church and want God to move. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. The disciples had to wait 10 days. We got to at least wait 10 minutes. Come on here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, God. Thank you, Jesus. Bless him, God. Bless him, God. Bless him, God. Bless him, God. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Glory, God. Come on, give the Lord a hand praise. Oh, my God. We got to have a shut in. Hallelujah. We got to have a shut in. Hallelujah. I got to get Michelle to set up a shut in. We got to have a shut in. Amen, amen, amen. We got to bring our sleeping bags. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We got to stay in the house of God. My God, my God, my God. My God, oh, oh, take your time, Ma. Oh, no, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my. Uh-huh. We said it chilled my body and not my soul, Ma. <laughs> It's never too late. Some of you need to watch this. I said it's never too late. 
Why spend 40 years looking like you saved? Some of you been in the church so long, you just look saved. Are y'all hearing me? You know what I'm talking about? And they say, because your mama was a deaconess, we just assumed you were saved. And then you die and they have a wonderful, they call it a home-going service. And they don't realize you're going to hell because you never repented of your sins. Look at this miracle right here. Chris, give me some warfare. I believe something about to happen here. She's been seeking for some time. Lord, in the name of Jesus, come on, lean in with me, church. And by the power of the Holy Ghost, we thank you for this daughter of Zion who's been seeking you, Lord. And you said, if you seek me, you'll find me. Lord, open up the door and step down into our heart as never before. Break up the fallow ground. She has people connected to her, dear Lord God. I come asking that everybody would come out, dear Lord God, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, let the old creature go down in the water, but let a new creature rise up to the newness of life. And now, woman of God, upon the confession of your faith and your belief in God's eternal word concerning the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and the confidence you have in that word found in Matthew 28, 19, Mark 16, 16, Luke 24, 47 John 3 5 and Acts 2 38 and upon the authority given to the apostles and now given to me as the pastor of this church we now indeed baptize you in water in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost and that with fire glory be to God your belly children of God he said out of your belly is a stirring up on the inside out of your belly mm. glory God glory God glory God hallelujah talk that talk glory be to God get a camera up there y'all got to see what's happening glory be to God it's a testimony to everyone that he'll bring you on out is there 20 people here that said I know the Lord can bring you out I know the Lord can do it I know the Lord can save it I know the Lord can raise it glory be to God come on put your hands together Y'all can't hear it, but something's happening up there behind the walls. Oh my! Oh my! I see you, young man. Some of you need to make it a family affair. 
bring your whole family say we all getting baptized hallelujah the Bible says Lydia and her whole house were baptized oh my Lord we bless you and thank you for your goodness and your mercy on this your young man Lord you see every valley he came from and you see where you're taking him so now dear Lord God break up the follow ground cause this to be a memorial before you give him the blessing of Cornelius Lord in the name of Jesus you have designed him to be a leader so now dear Lord God I come asking that as he goes down in the water, that every fear, every trepidation, everything that's tried to hold him would die in the water. Put your blood on it, the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus be powerful in the water right now. The name of Jesus be powerful on the water right now in the name of Jesus. And now, young man, upon the confession of your faith and your belief in God's eternal word concerning the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and the confidence you have in that word found in Matthew 28 and 19, Mark 16 and 16, Luke 24, 47, John 3, 5, and Acts 2, 38. And upon the authority given to the apostles and now given to me as the pastor of this church, we now indeed baptize you in water in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Let's go. Yes, sir. We see you. We see you. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I said it's a new day. Come on, give the Lord praise all over the house. It's a new day. It's a new dawn. It's a new season. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And as the people come out of this door over here, saints of God, oh, here we go. Uh, come on, give him a round of applause. Come on, brothers. Come on, Tamu, all of you guys, come on. Let's go. My God, she in the back. Oh, the first daughter, amen. She already came out. I didn't see her when she came out. Come on, can we celebrate this daughter of Zion? Look at her coming down. She, she looked different. Come on, women of God, Sister Doris, those of you women, I give her a round of applause and a hug. Oh, what's happening there? Oh, my. Glory be to God. Joe, F, can you get on the drums? We're going to leave with Senate on down. Song go. Glory be to God. We got to bring our young people to the altar. Last week at the revival, we had the young people getting filled with the Holy Spirit. It was all over the altar. Go on and let him have his way, young man. Let him have his way. Let him have his way. Glory be to God. Oh, you just got to open up your mouth. We got to teach a class. You got to open up your mouth. When the Lord filled me with the Holy Ghost, I just looked up to heaven. I opened up my mouth. He filled me with the Holy Ghost. That's the way you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah. You got to let him take your tongue. Hallelujah. 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 That's the password. That's the password. Hallelujah. How you going to like it? Hallelujah. 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 You say you got to push in your key code. It's Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to dismiss together. Everyone stay right where you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Come on, give the Lord a hand praise. said that's it I love when you baptize stuff happens when you baptize how many of y'all know Alton don't play amen you're gonna get something you every time I see him go back there I say oh it's time I need all you other ministers to catch that amen amen come on standing all over the house send it on down Lord send it on down Lord